everybody. Thanks for watching this video introduction to the kinds of appropriations considered in the Utah legislature. Wait, 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 please don't push stop. I promise it'll be worth your time. When Utah legislators appropriate, they do more than just set the budget. They also review funds that agencies can spend without legislative permission. They authorize business-like activities. They permit the Division of Finance to move money from one account to another. They sweep restricted funds into the Unrestricted General and Education Fund. They review funds for which Utah has fiduciary responsibility. And they scrutinize funds that spend bond proceeds and cash on infrastructure. Altogether, that's more than $14 billion in financial activity, even though the so-called budget is only $13 billion in fiscal year 2014. The first of these kinds of appropriation is what accountants call the legally adopted operating and capital budget. This is what everyone is most familiar with. It's the expenditures controlled or capped by an appropriations bill. Now, having said that, there are degrees of flexibility within the legally adopted budget. For the most part, these appropriations are absolute, but for dedicated credits and federal funds, statute allows agencies to spend up to 125% of what the legislature appropriates. Dedicated credits are fees charged by government that go directly into a budget and not into a fund or account. Other types of appropriation in the operating and capital budget like revenue transfers, non-lapsing balances, and lapsing balances, are calculated amounts based on the transactions I've already mentioned, as well as prior year activity. So those numbers will change. The second type of appropriation is more informational, really. In some cases, the legislature has chosen to allow the executive branch to spend public resources for designated purposes without seeking annual permission. We call these expendable funds and accounts. Some examples of these are the Industrial Assistance Fund, a general fund restricted account backed by sales taxes. The Permanent Community Impact Fund, a proprietary fund backed by federal mineral lease revenue. And the Crime Victims Reparations Fund, a special revenue fund backed by fines. While outlays from these funds are not capped by an appropriation, we include them in the appropriations process so that lawmakers and citizens see all government spending. These two categories, operating and capital budgets, plus expendable funds and accounts, make up the nearly $13 billion budget. Next in our litany of appropriations types is business-like activities. As the name suggests, these are government activities that act like businesses. There are two main types enterprise funds that are outward facing and serve the public, and internal service funds that face inward and serve other governmental units. Enterprise funds, like the Utah Correctional Industries and all revolving loan funds, are controlled via their statutes and accounting rules. Internal service funds are controlled by three factors included in appropriations acts, rates, employment levels, and permission to acquire capital. While by statute the legislature must approve ISF budgets, those budgets are only informational. Rates, FTE, and authorized capital outlay are the three things that legislators should focus on to limit the size of internal service funds. The fourth and fifth types of appropriation considered by Utah legislators are similar. Our exemplary state accountants in the Utah Division of Finance will not move money from one account to another without legislative direction. Thus, we include in appropriations bills, transfers among restricted accounts and transfers from restricted accounts and funds to the unrestricted general and education fund. These transfers can only be done under certain circumstances and should be considered independently to gauge their validity. Second to last on our list is what we call fiduciary funds. These funds contain someone else's money for which the state of Utah has accepted or been given responsibility. Many consider these off-budget because they don't directly impact government spending. However, as we have seen with the Navajo Trust Fund and the FLDS Trust, they can present a liability to the state. In both of those cases, the state wound up paying tax revenue to either fund beneficiaries or fund managers. 
we review some of these in the appropriations process so that legislators are aware of the liability and the fund's solvency. Finally, we come to capital project funds. These funds contain financial activity associated with infrastructure acquisition. If the state acquires a building or road using tax revenue or borrowing, it can be seen in a capital projects fund. Because debt is reflected in the operating and capital budget only when it is paid, debt financed capital expenditures do not show in that budget. They show in a capital projects fund. To see the current amount of outlay on infrastructure in any given year, whether that outlay is from cash or bonds, one has to look in capital projects funds. Each kind of appropriation is contained in a separate subsection of appropriations bills. Here you have, for example, the Natural Resources, Agriculture, and Environmental Quality Based Budget Bill. You can see that section 1A is the operating and capital budgets. If you scroll down to page 12, you can see 1B, expendable funds and accounts, 1C, business-like activities, 1D, restricted fund and account transfers, and 1E, transfers to unrestricted funds, and so on. Not every appropriations bill will have all kinds of appropriations, but many appropriations bills have more than just one type of appropriation. Well, that's it. Thanks for learning about the kinds of appropriations in the legislative process here in Utah. You made it all the way through and survived. Congratulations. Thanks for bearing with me.